Hello and welcome everyone, it's Mr. Umath again and today we want to have a look at the last part in our derivation of all the even values of the zeta function, okay? This video is called the grand final. Now let's just recollect what we know from the previous videos. First of all we found out that the zeta function, or sorry not the zeta function but the cotangent function could be expressed in some kind of a relation to the zeta function. This was the sum expression. Then what we found out was that the cotangent function could also be written as x over e to the x plus 1 uh, plus some additive part and so forth. Uh, we will have a look at that. And um, this strange looking function had a um, Taylor expansion using these strange coefficients beta mu. What we know is that beta 0 is equal to 1. We know the beta of 1 is equal to minus 1 half. And then, uh, this is very interesting, all the odd values will vanish. Okay, We will only have even values. And the way to calculate these beta values is just using this relationship. And this bracket is the binomial coefficient. Now, let's just write down what we found out. We found out that the pi s cotangent pi s could be written as i pi s plus beta 0 over 0 factorial. Remember, this is uh, defined as 1. Then we have beta 1 over 1 factorial here in brackets 2 i pi s. And now if you look at this beta 1 value, what it actually is, it's minus 1 half. So what we'll, we will have is minus sign and the 1 half and this 2 will cancel. So actually this is minus i pi s. Look at this guy here in front, they will cancel each out. And then this guy here, beta 0 will just give us 1 over 1, which will be just simple 1 here in front. And then the only interesting part is here in the back, okay, in the back corner. But, you know, when we talk about um, Taylor expansions or series expansions, then what we do is always we take out the S part, so the, our variable to some power, and then we have some coefficient, and we will sort things out right now. Now, uh, like I told you, this guy and this guy will cancel. We will get a 1 in front of this buddy. Then we have minus 2, then this infinite sum, beta n, which are these coefficients, over n factorial, okay? Then we have minus 1 half, and then we close the bracket, and here we have 2 i pi s to the nth power, okay? Now what we will do is actually we will take all these guys to the nth power. Well, let's have a look what will happen. And uh, sorry, I forgot to mention this is the relationship which relates this strange pi, uh, function pi s cotangent pi s to this cool thing. Actually, what you can see by th at this point, okay, is that this guy has to be somehow related uh, to the coefficient of these uh, guys s to the nth. Okay, now let's look how we can get to this point. Again, I rewrote this and what I used here is that we know that all the odd values of beta, some odd value but not one, they will vanish. So actually we could replace this n by all the even values, okay? 2n over 2n, so I just replaced this and this n will turn to n 2n, but instead of starting at 2 we will have to start at 1, okay? pretty simple. Now, the only thing that is left is take all these guys here to the nth, uh, to nth power. Let's have a look what will happen. I've rewritten these very important equations. Now I'm taking them to the 2 nth power. What will happen is we get 2 pi to the 2 nth power and we will get i to the 2n. Okay, This minus I took in front here with this bracket and this half went here below in the denominator. Now what you see is we get s to the 2n. Actually you could stop here and say, wow, I'm lazy. Look at these guys. These coefficients have to be the same. Now, uh, but we are not that lazy. We will do a little step before of that and we will look at this guy here, i to the 2n. What is i to the 2n? 
if you know what i is i is the imagery unit okay and if you take i square it will always give you minus one so we could rewrite this guy to i squared over n or better to the nth power sorry now what will happen then is i squared will give you a minus one and this to the nth power and if we combine it with that guy we will get this one minus two here this infinite sum minus one to the nth plus one power because this will give you minus one to the nth power and this is uh, minus one to the first power here we get two pi uh, two and and here below we get two multiplied with two n factorial okay now this is beta two n and this is two uh, uh, s two n now what we can do at this point it's pretty simple actually we can just compare these bodies okay this is um, comparing the coefficients in a power series and if you have two power series which are representing the same function then their coefficients have to be the same okay now then we get this nice and cool formula but now you could jump up and say hey buddy you don't know what this beta 2n is actually you're right but I can calculate them by using the very strange sum that we had before so let's have a look we have this guy and we have these relationships okay and then you can just plug in all these values that you know and then calculate what you get from that it's pretty simple and we will try okay maybe you remember we did zeta of 2 this was the first not the first video in this series but this was the video before these three parts okay now there we derived that pi squared over 6 and how we did that if you remember we took the Euler product of the sine function then we just multiplied it out and compared it to the Taylor expansion of the sine function itself okay now this gave us this result and we can just try to uh, to look if our new formula does satisfy this okay so what we have to do is we have to take 2 pi to n is equal to 1 so we get to the second power we get 4 pi squared then we have beta of 2 which is I haven't written it down here but you can use this um, table here it will give you actually uh, 1 over 6 then we have 2 over 2 factorial um, and you get this guy and this in front will give you minus 1 to the remember we have n equals 1 so this will vanish and if you go ahead and see 4 this 4 and these 2 uh, multiply with 2 factorial will cancel and we get pi squared over 6 so this sounds very very nice now we can test this and just take the formula plug in all these values and the only thing that you will need to know is that beta of 4 is equal to minus 1 over 30 use this relationship to calculate it and you will see you get pi over 4 over 90 and you could go even further and um, this looks a little bit strange but it actually is not the only hard part would be calculating this beta and the only other parts are just plugging them in in and just reducing your fraction until you get pi over 6 over 945 so actually this concludes this video and I hope you enjoyed this series and actually I must admit we are at the end of this series no just joking this is uh, just actually the really beginning of my series and what we did until this point was all almost all was known to Euler almost all of this Euler knew and he could do stuff with that this was no problem to Euler now the important step which we are going right now will be we will try to have a look at Riemann's paper okay the very very important paper that he published and that uh, was actually the origin of the Riemann hypothesis and uh, I hope if I have time to get further and further and talk about the Riemann hypothesis how he developed it how he found the relationship to the prime counting function and so forth but I can't promise this I have my duties also and <laughs> Uh, like I told you if I have time I will do them some videos are already prepared we will have a look at the Riemann 
functional equation of the zeta function which is pretty pretty nice and yeah i hope you will stay tuned and please like my videos and please subscribe because i need some <laughs> so to say some motivation i'm doing these videos on my own and i would really like uh, to see some comments of you guys some feedback if you didn't understand anything and that actually concludes this video okay so see you guys